Now let's talk about sorting. We've talked about how to parallelize it before. We're going to shuffle the data across the machine, streaming it out to the network as it's scanned. And the challenge, which we talked about briefly earlier, is that we have to split the data up by values. So in this example, we split the data across three machines as negative infinity to 10, 11 to 100, and 101 to infinity. But how do we know that those particular split points are good ones? Well, our goal is to ensure that the ranges have the same number of pages, which is to say that each machine has to do the same amount of work and we avoid data skew. The way we're going to have to do that is by understanding the distribution of values across tuples. So if our goal is equal frequency per machine, every machine should get the same number of tuples. Note that the ranges will not divide the x-axis evenly. We have to choose the ranges so that we get the same area under the curve in each partition, the same number of tuples in each partition. And so we can do something like this, where we've got roughly the same area under each one of these bars in this bar chart for the data assigned to three machines, blue, green, and orange, right? So if the data is small, you can literally build a bar chart like this and partition the data into even thirds. But in general, the data is very big and it would be expensive to figure out where these partitions should be. So what's usually done to get good range partitioning for sorting in a parallel system is to have every node sample its data, gather those samples together, and then build this histogram, so to speak, over just the sample of the data. And that helps us pick good split points based on a random sample of the data. And then we can tell each machine how to partition based on the ranges we choose from sampling the data. Now, I will mention on the side that random sampling can be a little bit tricky to implement. Um, it's much simpler if the input to the thing that needs to be sorted is stored on disk, is materialized. So sometimes in a database system, there'll be a materialization before a parallel sort to enable a sample to be drawn to build this kind of partitioning. Now, having looked a bit at how to pick a partitioning key for, set, for sorting, let's look at parallel sort merge join. Passes 0 through n minus 1 are very much like the parallel sorting we saw before where in this picture, and this is uh, going to be a two-pass picture, it'll look sort of as follows. So for pass zero, we're going to range partition the data based on a partitioning key that's gathered from a sample, as we described above. And then that's going to shuffle the data across the network, and every node is going to do local um, quick sort to sort these things into runs of size B on disk. Right? So the data is streaming into memory on these remote nodes. When the memory fills up with B buffers, it runs quick sort, writes a partition, and then continues getting more data into memory. Now pass to do a join, we're going to do the same thing, uh, but we're going to do it for both relations, generating runs for R and runs for S. And then locally, now that we've got the data range partitioned, we simply do the remaining pass of sort merge join locally, merging the join partitions on each node. All right, and that's done without any communication. And in this picture here, we're doing our little optimization where the last pass of merging R is also part of the join with S. So we merge R and S at the same time and we join them together while we're merging. 